Science is such a broad term, covering the smallest cells and structures inside of us to the big questions out there in the universe. With so many researchers tackling so many projects, the scientific community continues to make brilliant advancements each day. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we will be looking at three recent discoveries. New form of DNA discovered inside living human cells. Investigating precisely what goes into making us human, making us largely the same but with such vast differences, is a complex ongoing research battle. Understanding how DNA works is an incredibly advanced feat to try and accomplish. This complex matter is the underlying code to making us human, tying us to our ancestors and making us who we are. Scientists have been studying DNA for decades, over a century even, and we have even grown to know it in its distinctive double helix form, where two strands are twisted around one another. This is how it appears in living cells, and how you were taught about DNA in school, though this is not the only way for DNA to present itself. Away from the human body, tucked away in labs and test tubes, Scientists have observed other forms of DNA, shifting shape not to the characteristic double helix, but instead forming stranger, more interesting and unique shapes. These more intriguing shapes and DNA structures are confined to the labs, or so we thought. In 2021, a research team led by Imperial College London observed a four-stranded DNA shape, named the G-quadruplex, forming independently from our external interference within human cells. The team has created probes designed to look at how the G-quadruplexes interact with the other molecules within these living cells. While we cannot be certain, it has been speculated that G-quadruplexes have some sort of role in cancer development, as more of these G-quadruplexes are found in smaller areas in the cancer cells. Since there is some sort of correlation between the concentration of G-quadruplexes and the presence of cancer, some have suggested a tie between the two. The aim of the probes, set out by the Imperial College London team, is that they will show us how G-quadruplexes can be dismantled by particular proteins. Between this and the possibility of helping us to discover what other molecules can bind to these unusual DNA forms, we may be able to develop drugs to target these specific DNA strands, interfering with their activities. If this is successful, then these probes have a huge potential to have a profound impact upon cancer treatments. Ben Lewis from the Department of Chemistry at Imperial College London and one of the study's lead authors explained that there are different DNA shapes, all of which have a significant variation in their impact upon the processes that involve the DNA. This can include reading, copying or expressing genetic information. He continued, adding that there is an increasing amount of evidence suggesting that the G-quadruplexes have a key role in several processes crucial to maintaining life. The missing piece of the jigsaw in understanding a number of diseases and illnesses has been being able to place this out of the ordinary DNA structure into living cells. We have found instances where this structure is present in cells. These G-quadruplexes are still rare to be seen inside living cells, so the techniques, methods and equipment that we use to detect these is not the most accurate or advanced by any means. Instead of being tailored and designed to look for these very specific molecules, the equipment is far more standard than that, detecting molecules, though not these exact ones. Lewis said that this was like finding a needle in a haystack, but the needle is also made of hay. Further researchers, associated with the Medical Research Council's London Institute of Medical Sciences, has taken this research another step further, using a chemical probe named Douta M2, which will light up when the G-quadruplex is present, regardless as to the quantity or concentration. The team were then able to time how long the bright fluorescence lasts. This gives us a more sophisticated angle to this research, eliminating some of the more unreliable techniques that have been used to conduct similar research in the past. The next step was to introduce them to helicase proteins. These are molecules that would unwind these confusing DNA structures, letting us look right into the live cells directly. The team also looked into how molecules and the G-quadruplexes interact, seeing how and which molecules bind themselves to these DNA structures. 
When we have this sort of understanding, researchers can then investigate the nucleus of these living cells and gain a better understanding of these phenomena that we would not be able to observe otherwise. The biggest hope to come from this research is an understanding in how to develop drugs to tackle these specific DNA structures, helping to fight awful diseases like cancer. closest black hole system to Earth contains no black holes. Sometimes when we make a scientific discovery, we need to undiscover something we thought we knew. Disproving the existing research, theories and hypotheses is what allows us to make advancements and develop our understanding of the universe. In 2020, a team of astronomers from the European Southern Observatory said they had found a black hole reported as the closest to Earth in the HR6819 system, only 1,000 light-years away. This was not a claim that was generally agreed upon, with an international team based in Belgium contesting the results. A paper published in March 2022 says that in this black hole system, there is no black hole. So, if there is no black hole in HR6819, what have we spotted? The Belgian team has suggested that this is what is known as a vampire two-star system, which is in a rare part of its life cycle, making it less easily identifiable. The original study welcomed this criticism. After all, science is about making discoveries and advancing knowledge, not accepting everything as the truth. Thomas Ravinius, a Chile-based astronomer and the lead author on the initial paper, said, Not only is it normal, but it should be that results are scrutinized. Given the data the team had available, the original conclusion did seem perfectly viable. They believed HR6819 was a triple system, meaning one star orbited a black hole over a 40-day period, and a second star orbited the same black hole over a much greater period of time. The Belgian study, however, led by Julia Bodensteiner, suggested that there are two stars in the system, both on a 40-day orbit, though there was no black hole. This means that earlier in the timeline, one of these stars would have to have been much bigger but over time lost some of its size and mass to the smaller star. The teams concluded that gathering new data, making the most of different equipment, would reveal which hypothesis was more accurate. The Very Large Telescope and Very Large Telescope Interferometer were used to help gather more definitive data. The newly combined teams confirmed that there was not a brighter star in a wider orbit and the fresh data helped to determine that HR6819 is in fact a binary system with no black hole. This team is continuing observations, working on a joint study over time to figure out the evolution and limits. Who knows where the actual closest black hole to Earth is? NASA is working on a nano starship. When we think of space exploration, we often think of huge rockets launching, gigantic satellites orbiting, or hefty rovers landing. What if we told you the latest development of space exploration, the next space technology, is just the size of a postage stamp? In 2016, a team of scientists, including the late Stephen Hawking, first shared the news of this tiny spacecraft set to explore Alpha Centauri, the nearest star system to us here on Earth. This small ship, destined for interstellar space, has been dubbed Starship. In theory, if we make this ship travel at 20% the speed of light, then it will arrive at the star system in just 20 years. Though, as we know, the conditions in space are not exactly friendly, and there is a very real chance that this small little craft would not survive the journey. We are talking 20 years' worth of exposure to the elements, most notably, according to NASA and the Korea Institute of Science and Technology, radiation. Researchers have discussed the possibility of rerouting the craft to avoid the areas with the most high-energy radiation. Otherwise, the silicon dioxide layer of this little craft would be severely damaged, and it would not make it to Alpha Centauri functional. However, if the craft takes a less straightforward path, it could add so much time onto the journey that even small levels of radiation would be damaging. Another solution could be to add aspects to the nanocraft that could protect from the radiation, but the additional weight would slow down the starship. A new hypothetical solution has been pitched, designed to allow the ship to heal and repair itself 
along the journey. So far, this could include an experimental gate or round nanowire transistor. There are still plenty of aspects that need to be considered to this project, though it seems as though one by one we can come up with solutions and ideas that will not compromise the speed or safety of Starship. But what do you make of these space discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.